This is, this is, these are things that a lot of our people don't understand. If our people knew that there was God's chosen people and they knew what was required of them to do, they wouldn't be just trying to get by. They'll be trying to be, be owning this property, owning stores, creating jobs for their people, creating living situations for their people, fixing their streets, cleaning up their streets, getting all the drugs, the dope, the guns, all the gangs out of their streets if they knew there was God's chosen people. But guess what? The black men today don't know. They don't give a damn. They just living life. But guess what? Today is a new day. Naraya, you the GOAT, boy. RT, you good, bro? Crazy coming back and crack the sky, he come with fire. Grab a look, yeah, it gotta burn. Yo, yeah, with fire, damn, where you be dead at? It's in the Bible. I tell you what you're afraid of. A black messiah. Crazy coming back and crack the sky, he come with fire. Grab a look, yeah, it gotta burn. Yo, yeah, with fire, damn, where you be dead at? It's in the Bible. I tell you what you're afraid of. A black messiah. Crazy coming back to save his people from the enemy. The same people stole us, then they sold us to the enemy. Came on a slave ship, shackles on my damn arm. Yokes around my neck, on my feet, so I couldn't run. Me, Shaq, Shaq. said you don't believe in hate, right? So, break it down a little bit for me. What makes you not believe in hate? I just never did. It's not the type of person I am. Maybe because I have a heart like that, so that's how I probably look at the world. But then, I don't care for that. So do you think it exists? So may, may, you may not believe in it. So you say it don't exist either. If I say I don't believe it exists, what would you think I believe it exists? I just don't. You can't try to change my mind. You can't try to preach to me, try to talk to me, change my mind because I believe what I believe. I'm trying to understand how you think. And I want to show you, if it doesn't change, it is what it is of the Lord. But let me show you some things about these people that did all this stuff to us. And I know you say you don't believe in slavery. I want to go back to it because I don't think we went too God, much into it. We worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, bro. The God, your God, of these 12 tribes right here. He's your God and your God alone. Matter of fact, let me get that. Hold that. Give me uh, Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. I want to show you out of the Holy Bible that the God of the heavens and earth is only for these people, and that's it. Then I'm going to go back to what I was at a moment ago. You got it? Read what you got. The book of Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. And ye shall know that I... I'm in the midst of Israel. So the Heavenly Father stated that he is in the midst of, what's your name, sister? Samia. Samia. He is in the midst of you and your son and your people, right? Read it again. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and I am the Lord your God. Samia, you hear that? God said he's the Lord your God. Do you believe that? Do you believe that the God of heaven and earth is your God? I mean, I guess. All right, now let's see how much, how special it is to be of this nation. Watch this. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. He said he's the God of nobody else but you, Sama. You and the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand that? Now, go back to Ezekiel chapter 35. So I want to show you something. We are not out here to teach hate to anybody. We're not telling nobody to beat nobody up, to go uh, hang them uh, on a noose and drag them by a truck and post their body on top of a, a, a cross and burn them up. Because all those things did happen to our people from another race. Do you, do you agree? Do you think those things happened to us? Was we not burned on crosses? Was not our people hung, lynched, dragged by trucks, split apart by horses? You can, you can actually Google real photos of that stuff happening. Go down to a, uh, a slave museum, African American museum, you will see all these things. So just, even though you see it actually happened, you still don't believe it happened? No, that's what it's So, okay, let, let, let me break this down a little bit more for you. So, if you had a million dollars on your bank account, you open up your phone, you pull it up, whatever bank you with, and it said one million dollars. You say, ah oh, man, I'm, I'm living out here in JC neighbor. I don't believe I got a million dollars. 
even though your bank app says you got a million dollars. Is that how you gonna roll? You see the physical proof of you having a million dollars. But by your condition, you saying ah, I don't believe it just because I don't believe it. What they gotta do with me? I'm just making an I'm just making an analogy. But what they gotta do with me? How I believe what happened back today and what's going on now? They're gonna. I'm just making an analogy. Does that make sense? If I said that? What if I said that? Would you look at me crazy? No. You believe what you believe. All right, sis. All right, sis. Let me, let me show you this real quick. Ezekiel 35 and 5. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35 and verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood. So the Bible is saying there's a nation of people on this earth that has a perpetual, meaning everlasting hatred towards these people on this side. And we've seen that from back in the 1600s, once we got off on uh, Plymouth Rock, Virginia, so on and so forth, off of those slave ships, they've been having a perpetual hatred since then, even before that, even till this day. Because you even said to yourself, you had some instance you had to uh, deal with in the court system, right? Am I saying that right? Am I saying it right? Okay. And they did not serve you justice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go dialogue with me. You heard what you heard, okay? All right, sis. So, so I'm just trying to bring up the point to let you know there's a people on this earth that do have a perpetual hatred for you, whether you believe it or not. This is Bible. You understand? And God has a certain feeling towards those people as well. Give me Romans chapter 9 verse 13. Alright, you got it. The book of Romans chapter 9 verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. You see that? So have you ever been to the church? You ever been to church growing up? How old are you as a matter of fact, if I can ask? Yeah. If you don't want to tell me, you ain't got to. Okay, 27. So when you're... 27 years on this earth, have you ever been to the Christian church? Okay, have you ever read about God hating a specific race of people? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. It's a question, yes or no? Okay, so being that this is in the Bible, and you have never heard that in the church, somebody's not teaching you the whole, have not taught you the whole entirety of the Bible. So therefore, that, that allows our people to not believe in slavery. That allows them to think that they ain't nothing more than a, uh, a Negro. I'm not saying this is what you're thinking. You are too. I understand that, right? But these thoughts come into our mind because our churches have failed us. They have not brought up the Bible as it is written. They have brought up their own doctrine, their own teachings. You understand? That's why our people go up and down lost, not knowing or not caring where they are going. They just live in life for how many years of this earth the Lord gives them, and that's it. Best way to be. Huh? The best way to be. The best way to be? Yeah. So you you don't want your esteem yourself uh, for you and your son after you are gone? So once you die, you want him to live a good life, right? You want him to stay in JC Napier? No, because I'm not going to be here. Okay, so you obviously have to look. That don't mean nothing. Right? I'm just trying to figure out what I'll do. I'm just trying to dialogue with you, sis. You make it difficult. <laughs> no, because I'm, no, I'm going to ask questions. I'm to ask. If you got questions, feel free to ask. Like I said, I look at life differently than a lot of people out here. I might look at different than y'all. It doesn't matter. Okay, that's, that's why I'm, I'm trying to understand your thinking. But you kind of, you shut me down every time I bring out a topic. It's nice. Because I mean, I'm speaking So, wh why not? If I may ask. Shut down and do your own thing, right? So if it ever began to affect you directly, what will you do? So just like we was bringing out earlier, a young lady got shot, right? She was pregnant, and the baby within her got killed. So I'm just, I'm painting a picture, right? So say for example, God forbid this happens, right? Say somebody gets into an argument or whatnot, next thing you know, the guns get to coming out and they get to shooting, 
say you're around that area, like I said, God forbid, you or your son may get hit. So now, now what would you do? What's your thought process after that? What, what means of help are you seeking for? What solutions do you want to happen after that situation has happened to you? You you're just gonna sit there and die? You don't want nobody to call the ambulance to come get you? You don't want nobody to uh, support you if you if you get paralyzed, nothing like that. So you, if you get shot, your son gets shot, you just don't care. No, don't bring my son up with you. That's what I'm saying. God forbid. Okay, I'm painting a scenario. Okay, we're not doing that. So what would you do in that situation, sis? So nothing. All right, sis. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 15. So what we're going to do, we're going to show you and our people who we are according to the Bible, all right? So the reason that these things continue to happen to us is that we disregard God's laws, statutes, commandments. All right, we go riding around. For no reason, just revving our engine. If a police is around the corner, brother or the sister, who's, who's, whoever was in that car would have got pulled over. So our people go and do these things because they don't have no uh, view sight of where they're going. Matter of fact, give me that Proverbs. Uh, when no vision is, the people perish. You got it? So our people need to know who they are and where they are going in order to be able to succeed in life. All right, get through what you got. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. Huh? Where there is no vision, the people perish. So when a black man out here in JC neighbor and a black woman out here in JC neighbor have no vision of where they are going, they have no goals, they have no eyesight of what they want to be, what they want to do after they get out of the hood, what's going to happen? Where there is no vision, the people perish. Only death is sitting at, the, at, your, door, at your doorsteps. You walk around not knowing what you want to do, just living life, Whatever happens, happens, not doing anything to solve the solution, or to solve the problem with a solution. Our people gotta wake up and understand who they are according to the Bible. Black man, you are God's chosen people. You are the true Israelites according to the Bible. Slavery was Bible prophecy, and slavery happened. It came to pass. Why? Because we disregarded God's commandments. The only way to reverse the curses is by coming back to God's laws statutes and commandments. Now give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. All right, read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command in his day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God told Moses to tell the children of Israel, if y'all don't keep all of my laws, statutes and commandments, he's going to put forth curses upon you and your people. So let's read a few of these curses and let's see if that fits the black man and the black woman today in 2023. Read verse 16. Verse 16. Curse shall thou be in the city and curse shall thou be in the field. So the first thing God said, he said the black man and the black woman will be cursed in the city. What we had in Nashville, Tennessee. What 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 uh, type of uh, um, environment are we in? We're in the projects where majority of our people, black and Hispanic, dwell in. Is that the best place to be living in? No, it is not. Why did that happen to us? Because we broke God's commandments. Read on. And cursed shall thou be in the field. And he also said, cursed shall we be in the field. When did that happen? Back in the time of slavery. Yes, again. Slavery was Bible prophecy, and it did happen to our people. We was picking cotton, we was picking tobacco, sugar cane, all these different uh, resources, not for our own benefit, but for those who had us in slavery. Understand that. Go to your museums and look at your history, black man, black woman. You need to realize what happened to you in order to know where you are going. Hey, brother man right here in a black jacket. You got some time? I see you got some food, so you ain't going to your house to eat. You can eat your food right here, brother. Come holler at me real quick. You doing all right? Can I holler at you real quick? Two minutes. Two minutes, brother. That's what I'm talking about. All praise to the most high. I got some good information for you, brother. You doing all right today? Yes, sir. All praise to the most high. What's your name? 
Steve, all right, I'm Barack. So let me ask you a question real quick, brother. Do you know who you are? Black men that survive, we try to make it through the day, that's all. So you're a black man that's surviving, right? Okay, all praises. I want you to take a look at this sign right behind you. You see anything defined as a black man anywhere on this sign? Right, the first one, right? American black. You see right to the left of it, that says what? Judah, guess what? That's who you actually are. You are not a black man that needs to be just surviving. You are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's a very, very special thing. You understand? Give me Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Because a lot of people think Judah is white. Because when you think of Jews, right, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? White folk. But I'm going to show you that the Bible says something contrary to that. You with me? Watch this. Jeremiah 14 and 2. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Judah mourning and the gates thereof languish. So it said Judah mourning. So who we talking about? We talking about Judah, right? So let's see what this scripture describes Judah to look like. You with me? Read it again. Judah mourning and the gates thereof languish. They are black. Hold on. Judah is what? They are black. Judah is what? They are black. My brother right here is what? Black. So what color is the Jews? Judah. Oh, black. They black. So somebody been lying, right? Yeah. Somebody telling a story. Somebody telling a story. Guess what? The real story is so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. They are God's chosen people. Right. You, my brother, you are of that nation. You are God's chosen people. Understand right. that. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. This is, this is, these are things that a lot of our people don't understand. If our people knew that there was God's chosen people and they knew what was required of them to do, they wouldn't be just trying to get by. They'll be trying to be, be owning this property, owning stores, creating jobs for their people creating living situations for their people, fixing their streets, cleaning up their streets, getting all the drugs, the dope, the guns, all the gangs out of their streets if they knew there was God's chosen people. But guess what? The black men today don't know. They don't give a damn. They just live in life. But guess what? Today is a new day. Why to tell you that you are God's chosen people? All right? Hey, man, get back up here to this, uh, right, I want you to read this, uh, hear this before you walk, before you walk up, all right? All right, all right read what you got. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. You hear what God called you? He said you are in holy people. You know what that means? You don't know what holy means? It means to be separate. God created everybody, right? But out of all those 18 nations, he picked up the 12 tribes of Israel to be holy unto them, to be separate from the so-called white man, separate from the Chinese man, from the Arab man, so on and so forth. He said, you are holy to him. Come on. Unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. Hold on, he did what? Chosen thee. So you, you got a couple pairs of shoes, right? So, out of those couple pairs of shoes, you got you a favorite one, right? Oh, I got no favorite. Okay, but you, you wear one more than the other. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? right? God looks at us the same way. He got him a whole row, a thousand dollar Jordans, right? Uh -huh. But he said, these pair right here, they black, they clean. The Man, that's the ones I want to wear all the time. Oh, the these other ones cool, but now these right here, them mine right there. Yeah. Can't nobody touch them. Hell. You with me? Yeah. Watch this. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people. Man, he, he keeps getting more detailed and more detailed. He said you are a special people. You understand? Yeah. You are not no regular degular human being. He said you are special to him. Come on. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that, that are upon the face of the earth. Wow. So we said we are supposed to be above all people on the face of this earth. 
Yeah. But now, what was your name again? I, I forgot. Steve. Steve. So, Steve, are we above everybody right now? Yeah. How so? Well, as far as the man, you know. I'm talking about us as a nation of people. Oh, no, no. We not, right? Uh -oh. Do you know why? We're still struggling. We, we just can't, we too ignorant to stay together as a team. Oh, man, you done said something heavy. The brother said we too ignorant to stay together. Right. My brother, you are 100% correct. If our people knew who they were first and foremost, and understood that they must come together in order to achieve better things, we wouldn't be in this situation right now. You understand? Give me Zephaniah chapter two and verse one. What you gotta do? Let me ask you that. Okay, okay, okay. All right, but let me, let me get you to hear this while you walking off, all right? Zephaniah chapter two and verse one. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourselves together. What did God say? Gather yourselves together. And what did God tell us as black men to do? Come together. Come together, right? So should there be GDs and vice lords? No, should there be bloods and crips? No, man. Should it be 100 block and 200 block? No, it should be all neutral. It should be all neutral amongst our people. That's right. But we don't understand that. We gotta stop the division amongst one another and come back to who we are according to the Bible. Oh, it's up to you. It's up to you, that person, that one, you know. It, it, it ain't gonna take the next person. Because it's doing like you need to do that now, you gotta warn it yourself. And guess, it, you're absolutely right. It starts with one man at a time. Guess what you gotta do? Yeah. You gotta come back. Yeah. You gotta repent and keep God's commandments. Do you know how to do that? You say, I didn't hear you, I can't hear you. I gotta be my own man, but I'm be my own word. Okay, you got that in Acts real quick. So this is something that I people, that you need to tell your mother, your family, all of them what they need to do in order for everybody to gather together, all right? Yes, sir. Y'all young kids, y'all can come over and listen to what we got. All right, we're trying to teach our people to come back to who they are according to the Bible, to gather together, to stop the gang banging, stop the dope selling, stop listening to uh, the baby, Cardi B, uh, Sukihana, Sex and Red, all of these manners of evil, you gotta keep that out of your ears. We must do this. Read what you got. The book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So God's telling you young kids, y'all gotta repent. Y'all come over, I see y'all walking slow. Come on, turn around and hear the word of God real quick. Do y'all know that y'all are special according to God? Can I show you out of the Holy Bible that God said y'all are his chosen people? Let me show y'all that real quick. Come on over. Tell your mom and them to come over here. We can be out here for a minute. Come on over. Read it again. Acts 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. My brother right here. My brother with the Pizza Hut jacket. Can I holler at you real quick? I want to ask you one question. How you doing? All right, bro. You doing all right today? Yes, sir. All right, all right. So what we are trying to do, we're trying to get our people to understand who they are and teach them that they must gather together as one nation, and as you know, the Israelites, right? Let me tell you something. What you got? We're trying to teach me to, the young guys get a job and survive but they family is not here all these drugs. 100%. We gotta stop the selling drugs. We gotta stop gang banging. Right, right. We gotta stop dealing with our women right. and not marrying them. Get you a job and get, whatever you gonna do. If you got family, take care of your family. Right, 100%. Cause watch this. The reason why people's not doing that, cause something you just said, that's the basic necessities of life. You, well, need, to have, you need to have a job to be able to eat, right, to be able to drink some water, to be able to provide for your day. family. And you got to eat every day. Right, but guess why people's not doing that? Why? Let me show you. You got it? Hosea 4 and 6. I'm going to show you why people's not doing those things. It's one key reason, what, well, two, why they're not doing none of that. Why? That's, that's why they identify themselves. They don't themselves. want to learn. They don't want to get out here and do it. They, and they don't know either. Right. All they know is GDs, Vice Lords, Bloods, Crips, High uh, Rules, so on and so all forth. All that ain't necessary, bro. 100%. Go get you a job. Watch this. And, 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 
And you can make it. Hundred percent. Watch this. Hosea chapter four verse six. My people. Hold on. Who is God's people? You all of us. All Who is all of us? Everybody all on this earth. On this earth. He, you can't get there from God. Can I show you that? You if and God, your people are God's God, people. If you another day, for me, you another, you have breath, or air, or nothing from God. Hear me out, real quick. Let I me show you guys, so the people is. Watch this, brother. Don't take up too fast. That food ain't going nowhere. They gonna be cooking all day. I got to work. You gotta work. Okay, I, I understand. Survive. I survive with my family, bro. All praise to the Most High. Hit this while you walk off. No. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 1. Yet now Israel. I don't sell drugs. Yet now I here. Oh, take shit. my I work for a living. In Israel whom I have chosen. So my brother, God said Israel is his chosen. What's the nation? Nation is family. Nation is family.